Now, I, I want to come back to what Congress was trying to do in the late 60s, because um, there was a version of uh, or a precursor of donor advice funds in the sense that there were private foundations where you could stash family wealth and not have to pay out very much. And instead of being charity or philanthropy, it just became a way of perpetuating family wealth. So some of the reforms in the 60s were uh, directed at that. And now with donor advised funds, you can sort of play the same game. You can, you can stash a lot of money and um, only, uh, you may be more expert in the details of this than I am, but as I understand it, you, you can find loopholes to avoid giving away a lot of it. And so that's an area where it seems to me there ought to be a common concern among progressives, among conservatives, so that this is not abused. And also the other problem is that the the... the the people who were advising the funds, this is Wall Street. I mean, this is increasingly big business for Wall Street. It used to be, you know, it used to be a few freelancers who were good at advising wealthy people on where to put their money. Now this has become a new profit center. Right. The biggest of, charities in America are run by Fidelity and Vanguard. Yeah, and that's that's oh. crazy because yeah. they take a cut. So this to me is a is a pretty obvious abuse that we ought to be able to agree on remediating. So your article does finish, you know, conclude uh, uh, by saying the only effective defense is for progressives to go back to our roots. Yep. By that, I think, you know, our roots, progressives roots included neither tax incentivized or subsidized partisan voter registration or DAFs. Or, or what? Uh, or, or DAF. Or advice funds, yep. So what would be the problem with a good, solid, you know, well-meaning, honest progressive like yourself to be okay with banning partisan C3 voter registration and uh, doing something to rein in DAFs or, or, or prevent the tension? I, I'm all in favor of reining in donor advice funds. I if you if you If you try to ban partisan voter registration on the part of C3s, I honestly don't know how you do it Yeah, because you can make it de facto quasi-partisan-ish by choosing what pond you fish in. And I don't know how you prevent that. So by saying progressives need to go back to the roots, their roots, I didn't mean that foundations should never underwrite voter registration. Yeah. I was hearkening back to the early civil rights movement, the labor movement, the women's movement, the gay rights movement, the disability rights movement, none of which were foundation funded, all of which were based on direct organizing, mass membership, dues financing. And um, that to me is where progressivism succeeded. I mean, the civil rights movement becomes a constituency for Lyndon Johnson's great success in getting civil rights legislation. The labor movement becomes a grassroots constituency for Roosevelt's success. And that's how you get progressive change. You do it through organizing, not mm -hmm. through, uh, hi, I'm Bob Kuttner, I'm a smart guy and you should give my organization <laughs> grant. You know, a, a funny stipulation of um, the late 60s reforms on voter registration was that for a nonprofit to engage in it, they had to be active in at least five states and not have all their funding come from one source, right? They needed to have only max a quarter of their funding come from right. a single foundation or donor. And I, I checked, you know, the statute today, it's the same as it was back then. And I think it's it's interesting, and I don't know if it's ironic or not, that like there's kind of a, 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 t a tip of the cap towards a, a broad base public support for whatever sort of voter registration yeah. is going oh. on. And you contrast that with the way that um, certain funders are able to use shell games and sort of feign the passage of the public support test, right? So in the example of the 85 fund, you know, Leonard Leo is using DAF to foundation giving to feign that the organization has a broad base of support in a way that it well might not. And so I think that that kind of, you know, just sort of gaming out the ways that people do use the system that is in existence is also sort of holds the key towards how can we actually ensure that these organizations have public support or are operating as broadly you as have, you have to reverse you have to reverse engineer their tactics yeah. and come up with a reform that that prevents abuses
Mm -hmm. I think everybody can agree on that. Mm -hmm. Does just, you have to let me ask, I mean, are there DAFs on the left? I mean, you know, but okay. And it's hard to measure there. You couldn't measure the proportion of who's using what, but uh, there absolutely are. I'd love to get to the Leonard Leo letter, but can I do two on voter registration as, as the clock ticks? Some have proposed getting rid of C3 voter registration, letting it all happen either through C4 or by the way, God forbid, political parties. Uh, that would solve the problem, wouldn't it? Or the worry about subsidizing voter registration efforts of the party with which you disagree on either side. Uh, well, but since I favor a maximum amount of voter registration, yeah. I think that would be throwing out the baby with a bathwater. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you would, your definition of charity then would include, well, politics is that uh, voter registration? Well, is. no, I mean, voter registration, if it's even handed is civic. It's yeah. not partisan. Yeah. Now, if you game it, it becomes partisan. So there's a gray area. And if you can come up with tests that that indicate when civic voter registration slops over into partisan uh, voter registration, you can probably draw some kind of a line. But I think a clever lawyer could figure out how to game that. Right. And that happened, as you've referenced, in 67, 68. You yep. didn't need as much gaming. So are we headed for another tax reform act? Maybe I'm thinking of the anger at the center for tech and civic life. Uh, in, uh, this is essentially what your article is about, right. you know, get ready, everybody. And, and is how much is this like 67, 68? I think the election. Well, I think it, it depends on whether there's a weaponized IRS. I mean, if you have well-meaning people who want to have fair ground rules, you get one sort of reform. If you have Trump weaponizing the IRS, you know, then it's just open season on, on, on liberal foundations and liberal think tanks. So there, you know, there's reform. And then again, there's reform. Well, there are progressives though on the left who think that a lot of these abuses of see through see throughs as, as you've characterized them are anti-democratic. And it seems to me as if that's not inconsistent with some of the, you know, the uh, primal scream objection on the right to to what's I'm going sure on. I'm not sure they're anti-democratic. I'm making two very different arguments in this article. One, um, to the extent that progressives are relying on foundation grants to do all kinds of other stuff rather than doing organizing that weakens the progressive movement. The other, the other issue is exactly what should the ground rules be on voter registration. And I think left and the right could come, you know, assuming that Trump doesn't get elected and weaponizes the IRS, the left and the right could come up with a reasonable set of ground rules so that voter registration could be civic and not partisan. But maybe I'm a little cynical here. I don't think the right wants a lot of voter registration. I think the right's whole ground game is voter suppression. It's not voter registration. So it's not like we've got a symmetrical civic conversation here. Mm -hmm. The 69 Act was passed by a Democratic Congress, signed by Nixon, but Al Gore was wanting- The caucus to... ha had some different priorities in the late 60s, I would say. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If I ask, can I ask you about the Leonard Leo letter, if you've had a chance to take a look at it? Yeah, sure. Uh, there were some similarity. Uh, I, he's against ideation. One can sense I am reading through the lines uh, that he's a little tired of white papers from well-credentialed elites and wants to do more well, maybe grassroots. Are there areas of disagreement, if even, the only, if even only at the level of concept or abstraction, between Leonard's Complaints, beefs, uh, desire to pivot. From no, I don't. I don't ever want to be associated on any issue with Leonard Leo because I think he's done so much damage to this republic. Okay, that's all I'll say about Leonard Leo. Oh, okay. Do you think? I mean, the, the 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 takeover of the Supreme Court, the systematic use of the Supreme Court as a partisan uh, entity. Uh, he's a genius and an evil genius, and I would not get into bed with him on any issue. How's that? <laughs> Are conservative foundations too concerned with ideas and not enough with, oh, I don't know, uh, grassroots parental organizing might be one there'd be receptivity to on, on their part. Or... Could I interject and just say, isn't the Federalist Society and Leo's long-term movement building work, you know, 
creating these lifelong conservative justices or judges and creating this pipeline of talent on the right. I feel like that's kind of engaging in the kind of people organizing that uh, the left could learn from. Yeah, um, I would like to think that the left would not be quite as Leninist no. as Leo is. I'm just, I'm just more saying, turn. hasn't he already engaged in movement politics? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's a Leninist yeah. sort of movement where, you know, you, you turn one of the great institutions created by the founders into a Absolutely. purely partisan hack operation. And I don't want to associate myself with that. Sorry. If the deduction, if 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 exemption for foundations and nonprofits as a thought experiment were gone tomorrow, your point would still hold. Let's organize. D drop what's the we the original roots. I guess I'm back on. It didn't require subsidization or incentivization, or 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 even really. Yeah, and and that was really tough because in a capitalist economy, capital has a lot more wealth than labor. And so it was even harder for the labor movement in the 30s to gain some traction. It helped that they had Roosevelt on their side. It was even harder for the civil rights movement in the South, which was racist and segregationist, to gain some traction. It ultimately helped that they had the president of the United States on their side. So giving up all philanthropy and charity, that's a tough call. And charity, well, of course, is not the same. I'm giving up the exemption. I mean, there'd still be, it wouldn't kill charity, even civic minded charity, or would it? Is the who died and made so the what are you, what are you proposing who gives up? Well, uh, the thought experiment is no exemption. Charity wouldn't no exempt no no tax exemptions for whom? Well, whoever uh, private foundations and nonprofits. Let's just say private foundations, some that propose just that. Yeah, I, I I think all foundations ought to be public foundations, ideally. Uh, well, pr by private foundation, I meant the legal term of art. Uh, yeah, by public foundation, you you you're for the government. You, do, do you mean the government money? Uh, no, I'm talking I'm talking about public charities. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Yes, okay, that has been they're they're less subject to abuse. It, yep, yep. So. Yep. The, the question of what kind of groups ought to be tax exempt so that they can uh, get uh, foundation grants, that's a kind of a nuanced legal discussion. And I think in the context of the article I wrote, it's also a kind of a tactical discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, Bella, unless you have any more questions, we might um... be at point in time. Go ahead. Yep. <laughs> I think I would just um, want to know if just sort of assessing the current landscape, reform landscape, there are any things that you are feeling good about in terms of charity reform proposals or ways that um, anybody in politics is sort of taking up the matter of the relationship between philanthropy laws and political activity or what ought, what the sector ought to look like if it's actually going to serve the common good. Have you observed anything promising? Well, I think, I think the pushback against donor advised funds is a is a very good thing, and I think maybe we can get some uh, some convergence on that. And I think, in principle, although the devil is in the details, it's possible to get some convergence on what sort of voter registration is legitimately nonpartisan. Yeah. But when you get into the weeds, it gets it gets really tricky. So, you know, the New Georgia Project, which just did an amazing job, I don't know if it technically meets the test in terms of its big foundation funders being active in four other states. I assume they all have lawyers. But I would hate to see something like the New Georgia Project be deprived of the kind of foundation money that it was able to raise, because I think this was a good thing in both a civic sense and also to some extent in a partisan sense. And, and, and to the extent that you had um, Raffensperger and Kemp not being willing to steal the election for uh, Trump, in order for that to happen, the New Georgia Project had to win enough, get enough people registered so that Biden won the election legitimately. If it, not, if it had not been for the New Georgia Project, Trump would have won fair and square. 
So both as a partisan and as somebody who cares about civic democracy, I think the new Georgia project is a good thing. Now, that doesn't mean we should not fine tune the ground rules about who gets to give money to it uh, under what criteria. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if it's okay with the two of you, why don't we end it up there and thank uh, you. allow me to thank both of you, uh, uh, Bella and, and Robert, for, for doing this with us. We totally appreciate it. Thanks so it. much. Thanks for having me. Bella, nice to meet you. Great to meet you too. Nice to meet you, Michael.